Yeah, man, there's 74 lines, was fucking full Bennett and yeah, Gareth like, Edwards and I have it. Oh, Rappi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eat your snake heart out, Mr. Beagles. I went to Ellis Park and back, and the only danger was to my scalp as I slowly pulled my hair out. Okay, before I vent, let's look at Friday's games. It started with the irregular Sharks hosting the much improved Benetton in Durban. After just seven minutes and two tries to Benetton, the host's new owners must have been wondering if they had bought pufferfish or great whites. Luckily, the superstars they paid for woke up. Colisi and Mapimpi slapped their teammates awake and they actually started playing. The scoring ability of the Sharks got them into the lead and it outpaced their poor defense by the end of the match. Apparently, John Plumtree has been spotted in people's dumpsters around Durban. I'm sure most fans are hoping that he'll get caught, cleaned up and put to work as soon as possible the Big Dog Warriors hosted the suddenly very good Scarlets in the next game. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the weather on the night. The game ended up being a slow, rainy slugfest with two more tries beating three penalties in the end. The Glasgow Warriors have probably sealed a home quarterfinal by now and I need to apologize to coach Franco Smith. I badmouthed your skills at the start of the year and you have once again proved that I don't know shit about ass. Friday's last game was a home match for Ulster against the Dragons. They are still in a straight shootout with the Stormers for second spot on the log and a visiting Dragon side would be just what the doctor ordered. A proper thrashing and a full house of five points put them above the Stormers on the log. Time would tell if the Stormers could answer in kind. They could not. Saturday started with the Bulls playing Zebra at Ellis Park. Yes, the Lions and Bulls being close neighbors are doing a double team for the next two weekends. The Bulls came south and smashed Zebra on the Lions patch for a new Irk record of 78 points to 12. Their final rendezvous with the children of Leinster is sure to get hot and sweaty next weekend. A good win could see them finish sixth and set up a possible quarterfinal in Cape Town. That would be a meat grinder of a game. <sighs> After the Bulls did a job against Zebra, the Lions finally had the chance to show the whole competition how to beat Leinster. Where do we start? The visitors had multiple 20 and 21 year old players in their team. They were playing at altitude. The antagonistic crowd even contained people that weren't direct employees of the Lions or relatives of the players. Easy win, right? Leinster beat the Lions at home after fighting back from 26 points to 14 behind at half time and being down to 13 men at some point and losing their starting tight head at 26 minutes. Could we at least lose games at smaller stadiums, guys? The double embarrassment of faded red plastic chairs and comedy rugby is almost unbearable. I also miss the entirety of the Stormers hosting Munster, because leaving Ellis Park after a match is like something out of Mad Max. From the discourse, it sounds like it was a banger of a game. Arches Neyman was doing Arches Neyman things again, and apparently Dan Duplessis is looking very silky these days. An untimely visit of the kicking yips meant that Libok left some points out there and the Stormers had their first home loss since before Kanye went batshit. They have left themselves in the tough spot of having to beat Benetton well and then hoping that Edinburgh can beat Ulster at home so that they can get a home quarterfinal and a home semi-final. I said home a lot there. At least Edinburgh seemed to regain some of their form. They hosted the Ospreys and played like I thought they would be playing for the entire year. A great attacking display gave them a 45 points to 21 victory over the glum visitors. Here's hoping Edinburgh can do the Stormers a favor and beat Ulster, if only to give us more local knockout games. Then the hype for the Irk will stay high in South Africa. They probably won't. Last but not least, Connacht hosted Cardiff at the sports ground. Connacht are now on a six game winning streak and sit comfortably in the playoffs after a big win over the ex Blues. Their last game is against Glasgow and if they win and Munster lose, they will play Glasgow again in the final eight. Just a little factoid. 
And after all that, we have our final round of regular season games coming this weekend. Like last year, the rugby has been great, but the added wrinkle of European competitions has made it a lot tougher for us sappers. Our teams will just have to learn and they will adapt and hopefully they will all get better travel agents. One last push now for the final eight placements and then I don't have to worry about the Lions embarrassing me on the field anymore. Only all field embarrassments for this guy. Oh, rugby news is best, bro. You buy Huge news this week. On Saturday, just amongst all the rugby, Leinster, along with the Springboks, announced that Jock Nienaber will be leaving the head coaching role after the World Cup and he will be joining Leinster. This cannot be what it looks like at face value. It hurts too much. I choose to believe that he's going over there to sabotage Leinster from the inside. And as their empire crumbles around them, flames reflecting off of the professor's glasses, we'll all be happy for a more competitive and flourishing irk. We'll tune in to a Six Nations with less foregone conclusions. And the master plan set into motion by Munster in 2017 will finally have come to fruition. <laughs> and finally, every now and again, life likes to remind us of the passage of time and our own mortality. As I get older, I see more of these little reminders all the time. My daughter has changed from a baby to a toddler to a nearly fully formed child every new stage, bringing me a chance to miss the old her that I came to know. Gone forever. Our parents remind us too changing from bright beacons that used to guide us through the dark to slow glowing embers that need us to feel them just so that we can keep their warmth shining on us. And then there are the starkest reminders of all. Our favorite rugby players retiring. Over the last few weeks, we've had announcements from Ashton and Hogg and Nadolo, and it seems like the great Yaku Krill is about to join them in retirement. I've seen no official announcements yet, but if this is the end, Mr. Krill, Go well, one of my favorite rugby players of all time. And this episode needs to go well as well. I will see you all next week after Edinburgh's stunning victory in Belfast. Wow. Bye. Leave. <laughs>